ATP F100 is on the rack now, Andrew. Yep, it is. It's been a while since we got to put out a video. A lot of, a lot of stuff going on for both of us, but this is something new that you've been working on a lot lately. A lot of the people follow us on the Facebook groups or other social media have probably seen this in the works. And uh, it's finally ready. The new uh, Mustang E-Rack conversion kit for the Crown Vic. I'm just gonna tell us a little bit about it. This is my red truck, uh, the one that you know a lot of people know um, I built a long time ago. And originally we were gonna put this thing on quite a few weeks ago and then and then we broke down and I uh, had to tow it. And so I had a number of things that uh, ran into issues with, but uh, I want to get it back up because I want to get it installed because we're tossing them out there for everybody to, to purchase now. So, and this is the kit here. This is the, uh, the custom made TIG welded quarter inch mild steel bracket. And this thing bolts on to the, the Crown Vic subframe. And then, um, and then you bolt the, the, the 2015 and newer electric steering rack into the bracket itself. It comes with the hardware that you need. It comes with the electrical harnesses. These are all brand new connectors and new uh, six gauge automotive grade wires um, for the, the main cabling. And then, um, and then you have your, your 12 volt switched signal there. And then we have two brand new Moog Crown Victoria tie rods outer tie rods. Uh, however, these have to be modified because uh, the Mustang electric rack runs an M16 thread, whereas the stock Crown Victoria has an M14. So these all get drilled out. Um, we send them over to the machine shop and they drill them out and tap them and they're all ready to go. They're all brand new. So I don't mess around with any used stuff or anything like that. We put brand new Moog uh, tie rod ends. So that comes in the kit as well. So what so, about the E-Rack? Does that come with the kit? No, that is the one thing that we, we don't include with the kit. This is a 2015 and newer uh, Mustang electric rack. <clears throat> it does not come in the kit because most people, like myself, would like to buy a used one. Um, however, uh, I just don't really feel comfortable selling the used ones. I'd rather people just go source their own used one. Um, maybe here in the future we might offer a brand new one as an option for people if they really want to go with a brand new setup. Um, but right now, it's, you know, source your own 2015 and newer electric rack. So, um, it's a super straightforward uh, system, but um, it really does change the feel of, of the truck itself. So, it's pretty nice. It, it goes, the, the Crown Victoria is like a 17 to 1 ratio, whereas the, the Mustang is about a 14 to 1. So, you have a lot quicker steering. Um, I personally think you have better response in terms of uh, the feedback of the assist. Um, and then like what we found out today, when you run out of gas. That's what the uh, Tesla truck's gonna sound like. Did you run out of gas? Yep. You can coast and still have power steering, which is kind of a, a fun little, uh, uh, well, it's not very fun when you run out of gas, but uh, we it made was convenient. It. it was convenient having power steering instead of trying to turn those 305s without any power steering because the engine shut off. It's a real nice, convenient setup for the Coyote guys. The biggest downfall with the Coyote guys, you, you can't run the stock uh, filter housing. You gotta run a, you know, a remote system, a remote uh, uh, oil filter housing for it. So, um, which most people run remote anyways because it's so tight of a fit. So, um, you know, MMR's got some and there's a couple different companies that sell them. But, so the only thing that you really have to do <clears throat> is we do have to take off uh, about an inch of threads off of the inner tie rods on both sides. And that's just because the, the tie rod itself, this, the Crown Vic one, is uh, quite a bit longer, you can see, than the, than the stock uh, Mustang one. In fact, it's uh, about an inch, a little more than an inch there. So Go figure. Yeah, what do you know? <clears throat> well, we've got one installed already over here. We didn't get uh, the greatest video of it, but which is why we're doing this, your truck, but. Here it is in the Tesla truck. She's all just kind of in there, mm -hmm. but it's got power steering. And it every does. time we, we have to wheel this thing around, we just <laughs> it's a plug nice it feature. into the battery. Yeah. You just hook it up. And we got steering. Yeah, you got power steering. And I mean, these are 295s on the front of this thing. And there's not much weight in this, obviously. There's no motors or engines or anything like that. Um, but it's still, I mean, with the big tires on there and stuff, it's not fun to push, but having power steering, Makes it so much nicer. We're not working on that today. No. We're working on this. Yep. This thing needs a lot of love, unfortunately. So. She's a bleeder. 
here. Arguably one of the best reasons to get rid of the Crown Vic steering rack. No one's ever woke up in the morning and was like, today I want to put my hands in some power steering fluid. Well, I want to walk out and see a big old puddle of power steering fluid underneath my car, which is what happened to me the other day. Right before a trip, back in the trailer up, and I look over and there's a big old puddle. It was leaking right out of the O-ring seal. And this is actually a new rack. I bought this. This is a, a rebuilt rack, like three years ago or something. So, sure waste a lot of money there. Yeah, so I'm taking the studs out because um, you're gonna have to do that anyways on the kit. So we get rid of these studs. We, we put actual bolts in there. So they, they gotta come out no matter what. You might as well pull them out before you pull the rack off because it's just gonna make it easier pulling the rack out. It's just better to take the studs out first. All right, here we go, let's pull this thing out. <clears throat> yeah, so we'll, we'll lightly mount the bracket up here and then we gotta drill the single hole in the bottom uh, so we can put the half inch bolt in. And then we need to cut the threads um, of the rack and then it's basically like just swapping it out. So that's it. Okay, so uh, we got the, the, the bracket itself bolted up. And uh, what we're gonna do now is where the, there's a third mounting hole that goes right here on the bottom on this lower, on this lower uh, uh, plate that's welded onto the bracket. And it's a half inch bolt uh, that goes in here. And we're just gonna drill a hole right through. And the nice thing is that the, the Crown Vic subframe has this nice access hole right there. And then once we have this third one in, um, then we're, we're good to go ahead and continue to move forward. So the only thing you sometimes will run into is if you've already got your uh, sway bar mounted, you may have to remount this depending on where you uh, put the mounts. Mine's a ta just a tiny bit forward, um, so we, we, we might be okay with this sway bar, but we, we just won't know until we put it in. So we're gonna go ahead and get this drilled and, and finalize the bolting of, of the bracket itself. That's a good one, dude. That is. It's definitely gonna go right down here <laughs> into my shirt. Yeah. Oh, like where all hang on, hang on. What is that shirt you got there? Oh, uh, this thing here? Yeah. It's pretty exclusive. Military green lightning bolt, only available on F100performance.com. Yeah. She's through. Well, that wasn't very hard. For you. <laughs> okay, hang on. Make me beautiful. <laughs> So, um, what kind of torque you put on that one? Uh, a solid torque. <laughs> all of the torque. Get them all up in a bag. Put them all in. Up. Yep. She's tight now. She's real tight. What do you think? About there? Mm. Up there? Yeah, we'll do the knuckle right test. A little knuckle. Which knuckle? All my knuckles are different. Mm. Yeah, yours are kind of weird. Uh -huh. some big knuckles, too. Yeah. I might go less than a knuckle. How about there? Yeah, I think that's good. That's good? Yeah. It's really important when you're cutting these uh, tie rods that you overthink it and don't mess up at all. You know, you need to be precise. So we're going to go right about there. <laughs> You know how to make the perfect uh, end? Yep. You want to go get your little toolbox with all your uh, tapping, threading tools, and you're going to put them back in that toolbox, and then you <laughs> take one of these little flat, oh, flat disc. <laughs> yep. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> Done. Doesn't even have to be perfect. Done. Take your flap disc and a little 45. That's it. Put like your new tie rod ends. Uh, is that left? Yep. L. L, L means left. Bottom that thing out. Bottom it out. Yeah. Let's keep it going. There it is. Yep. It's 
it's done. Probably, it'll probably end up being two turns or so off of the bottom. So and then you're gonna wanna take- You got your precision measuring device. Your measuring device, do the same thing on the other side. Yep. It was really hot and it's burning my fingers. <laughs> Okay, measure. Oh, yeah. Right around. Right around there. there. Yeah. That was good. Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Gonna be about it. Not too bad. Uh, make a little modification to my uh, trans cooler lines. They're a little tight. We'll have to bend those out of the way a little bit. And then the sway bar, which it might fit. Yeah, it's just gonna be whether or not it. This yeah. Little knuckle right here. there. Yeah. So this is a this is a, a 4.6 liter two valve mod motor. It's got turbo stuff all up in here. You can see that it's got the, the the stock AC compressor, and it has transmission cooler lines that all run here. This was uh, I think these were the original lines that were uh, from the Crown Vic also, um, and turbo drain, which is right here in the front. And still, I was able to get the bolt. You can kind of see it back there. It's sitting up right now, but it should just drop into place here. It wasn't even like that hard. Oh, there it goes, you hear it? Oh, there it goes. Ooh, this one's close too. But it fits. <laughs> That's about as lucky as I've gotten with a custom parts. So th these uh, these nuts are a little bit tricky because it is right on that uh, webbing. So th the bolt has to be up real close to the, the bracket and then you'll get it started. Um, and then when it's fully tightened, the bolt should be right up against the, the webbing, just barely not touching. So yeah, I mean, worst case, you know, if somebody's got some other kind of engine that is even tighter right here, then you know maybe you'll have to pull a few more things off uh, to do it. But the way this was designed, the hope was to be able to install this on a running driving truck like this thing. Now for the power hoses. This is what uh, handles all of your hydraulic fluid to make the electric rack work. Mm, digital hydraulic fluid. It is really, really simple. So we have a long power lead, and then we have um, an 18 inch ground. So what we'll do is we'll put this in. We can attach this ground to any number of things. Um, I think on your car, on your truck, we went up here to the, the engine block, um, which is totally fine. Uh, you could put a, you could put it on the rack itself. You could weld on a stud or something over here to the frame. I mean, there's, there's plenty of places to put the ground. So, which is why we only needed it to be 18 inches. This, however, needs to go up as close to the battery or um, you know most people have the battery up here or back on the firewall <clears throat> uh, so it's pretty long and what I like to do with this is that you always want to fuse this so you want to put this on a fuse but it can go directly to battery so you'll take this up to either you can go you can go to the starter you can go to the the alternator if you have a real thick wire going to your alternator or go right to the battery which is the best uh, up there, I have a 50 amp um, fuse block, and so I'm going to run it up that way to the 50 amp. Um, I think we're running a 50 amp in your truck. If I'm not mistaken, the Mustangs have a 70 amp uh, fuse on here, so um, 
you know, but we've, we've been running 50 amp and it's been just fine. So putting a 50 amp or 60 amp or 70 amp fuse on it and then, uh, and then running it directly to battery. Then we have the small cable and this just goes to 12 volt switched. So you attach this to 12 volts, you put it on your key, key ignition hot uh, or accessory hot, then um, this is what turns on the rack. So as soon as you apply power to this wire, once both of these are hooked up to power and ground, um, it will, what this does is because we're not running a controller on it, um, it will take, it's about five seconds or so, five, 10 seconds maybe, for it to, to fully engage, because it's looking for a CAN signal. It doesn't have one, and so then it defaults. Um, and once it defaults, then everything is on, and you have your cyst, and um, you're good to go. That's basically it. There's just three wires. You know, the, the only other thing we'll do is we'll, we, we want to go through and, you know, find out where our steering wheel is, make sure our steering wheel is lined up or close to lined up. Once we have uh, put it on the ground, we'll measure toe. But most people are going to take this to a, an alignment rack or, uh, you know, somebody to do an alignment for them, so. Got her all wired up and in there. Yep. Ready for the moment of truth. So, where once it wasn't driving and it was on the stock Crown Vic power steering, so there was no power steering. And now it doesn't run still. But I got power steering. But Let's see it. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's nice. How does that feel compared to the old one? I had problems where I would lose power steering at, like right now, like if it were running, it would it would like catch and, you know, uh, not be very smooth, but this is totally smooth. The only thing I gotta do now is get rid of this uh, cheap China steering column that I got, because all the play that I've got right here is in the U-joint. That's pretty unsafe. They're plastic. Cool. Yeah, so when they break, you lose all your steering. Cool, that's yeah. cool. I like that. Yeah. That's a good feature. So the, the nice thing about the electric steering, though, is that um, this way I won't have those, those periods of losing assist because that little tiny plastic U-joint in there, it doesn't like being forced on real hard. So, man, I like that. So we're not talking like 90 Chevy truck that you could, you know, turn with your finger uh, it's got some some feedback. That's what I like. Yeah, that's what I like about my truck as well. Yeah, because it's yeah you, know, you don't want super soft steering. It's the same with the brakes. You don't want those mushy, you know, super vacuum assisted brakes because then you don't have any feedback. You don't have any feel of the vehicle when you're driving it. So this has. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited actually. And maybe this will uh, kick me into gear and need to get it fixed. Well. Before that, I think everyone wants to see something else get running, but for now, uh, if you're interested in, in one for your truck, you go to f100performance.com and you can order one there. If you like the video, uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, you can keep up to date with all the other products and parts coming out. And more importantly, you can uh, follow along. The next video we put out, we promise, will be on a Tesla truck. There's nothing wrong. It's just been neglected because of time, restraints, and uh, our other jobs. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Catch us next time. I'm just gonna sit here and imagine my truck is running.